Heat 3B of the Chevy Cup at Seafair is brought to you by Car Toys. Car Toys, a better way to go and a proud sponsor of Seafair. And is presented by Seafair, celebrating 60 years. So Heat 3B just about upon us, and here are the storylines we'll be following. J.W. Myers in the Haas Mortgage. He was a happy Heat winner. Can he make it two in a row? And how about Steve David in the sausage boat? Oh boy, Alberto, he's in that battle with Dave Vilwak. And finally, Jeff Bernard, we keep waiting for him to sneak up in the formula boat. Is this his time? Here we go, the lineup from Muckleshoot Casino for this Heat 3B. The Haas Mortgage Boat inside, oh boy, Alberto, formulaboats.com, Whirlpool, Miss Albert Lee, and then that Graham trucking boat with J. Michael Kelly at the controls. Take you out to the course, and there you go. The boats are in the process of finding their way around, and the temperatures just keep climbing here on the shores of Lake Washington, up to 85 degrees, but the wind has calmed just a little bit. A little bit of light chop, though, out on that water, and we'd like to welcome in all those listeners on KJR Radio and those of you listening to us on CairoTV.com, anywhere in the world. Welcome to you. Mike Fitzsimmons, Pat O'Day, along with Chip Hanauer and yours truly, Steve Rabel, getting set for Unlimited Heat 3B. Let's take a look at the drivers. In the Haas Mortgage Investors Boat Chip, it's J.W. Myers. Oh. But J.W. Myers right now has to get a good second or first place finish to get in the final for sure. Jenny, how are they feeling down in the pits about this uh, coming heat? Oh, they're cool, calm, and collected, guys. J.W. is in the cockpit making jokes to the crew. They're all having a good laugh. They put the thing down on him, and he went off all smiles. All right. In the old boy Alberto boat, the defending national champ, Steve David has a couple of second places. Mike, can he break through here? He can indeed, and he had the uh, points uh, over uh, JW, so he made a choice to go to lane number two. I think he wants to see what uh, Dave Vilwak discovered earlier in the day in the second lane and see if he can run around a fast boat from there. Guard, none more experienced in this race than Steve Dave. Oh, you got that right. He's ready to go. So is the crew. They set up for rough waters and just being down here in their pit, I could really start to feel the wind. But this was something kind of funny. They want to stay out of the carnage. They say the Graham boat, the Formula boat, and the Haas boat, they say they're a bunch of show-offs. They like to go fast and sometimes a little too reckless. They don't want to get involved in any of that. They just want to score some points. Oh, my. Well, this might be one of those show-offs here, perhaps. The Formula boats. Jeff Bernard, he is fast, Chip, and he is young. I have to agree. I think Jeff Bernard has to be mature sure as a driver and think about when it pays to go fast and when it doesn't. I don't think he's learned that quite yet. Brian Perkins hasn't had a lot of luck this uh, week so far. A couple of third places, but he needs to get those speeds up if he really wants to compete, Mike. And that's not going to happen this afternoon. The boat, as uh, we've mentioned earlier, is carrying about 700 extra pounds, but he's going to give a good accounting of himself. This is a fine race boat driver, and when he gets a good boat under him, look out. We talked to J. Michael Kelly during the course of this week with his brand new baby and girlfriend by his side. They were scared to death after what happened uh, in Tri-Cities a week ago, but they've got the boat running well, and J. Michael's a good driver. He's an excellent driver. I think J. Michael Kelly may have more natural, God-given ability than anybody out there, but he needs a little break now. So let's see if he gets it here in Heat 3B as we're a minute and a half away from the start. Again, all of the boats making their way back to the south turn. And then they're going to work their way down that stretch, back stretch, and get themselves into position in their lanes, Jeff. You know, we talk about something called parallel rollers. And parallel rollers are waves that come off the log boom, which is out here. And they just line up as the boats go down the straightaway. What happens is the sponson gets on either side of those rollers. So if you get a sponson on one side and the other on the other, it's actually like it's in a ditch. And it starts to steer itself. So it's very difficult. What you're seeing right now with boats going that slow, that's very difficult. Even though he's going slow, the boat just doesn't want to steer. And when we're talking about going fast, it's difficult, Pat O'Day, to go fast when you have those parallel rollers and you've got the fastest for us. And then that Jack in the Box congratulates the fastest qualifier in Alberto's the jerky boat. Steve David jerked it around the course in qualifications at 152.5. Now, Jack in the Box will never jerk you around. You get anything on the menu any time of day. They're at the floating bridge turn. And 
and Mike Fitzsimmons. Thank you very much, Patrick. And uh, JW was just up there way, way too early. And uh, so he had to come way down on throttle, as we uh, pointed out to you. He's now ratcheting up again, but he'll have the inside lane advantage. The real test here is whether or not Stephen David, with a quick boat inside, which JW is driving, is going to uh, be something that he can drive around from the two lane because there's a possibility he'll be seeing Mr. Vilwak in that lane pretty soon. Here they come to the start finish line, and they're across the line. We'll wait and see whether that's an illegal start uh, from the official standpoint. But we've got a whole lot of horsepower coming down into that first corner, and it looks as though Steve David leaves just the lane uh, and is going to take the advantage from lane two. Although it was a legal start, it was not a fast start. As a driver, you've got two jobs. One is to get to the line on time, which they did, but also to get to the line with as much boat speed as you can. They didn't have a lot of boat speed. Well, out of the corner, uh, he's going to have to be faster than that lane, too, if he gets it in the final heat. Steve David will have to be. But right now, J.W. Myers is in his mirrors and giving him no quarter at the present time. And coming up on the outside is Jeff Bernard with the Formula Boats.com. He's staying in the thick of it as well in the uh, three lane on the outside. Okay, coming down to the start finish line at the end of lap number one, it's going to be the old boy, old Berto, Stephen David, still fighting that national championship fight uh, in this heat as well. He comes across the line first path of speed. 138 for Steve David, 135 for J.W. Myers. So they're not going blistering fast here right now, and that's probably uh, due to some good strategy, although J.W. doesn't want to let him go yet. Uh, Chip, he's staying right with him. J.W. Myers' biggest fan right now is Dave Vilwak, because if J.W. Myers beats Alberto, that probably gives Dave Vilwak the pick a lane for the final. So Alberto has got to stay in front of the Haas boat if they want to pick, have a lane pick for the final. And you know, for a rusty driver, J.W. is driving a pretty good race here right now. He's staying right up with Steve David, and they're both coming through that corner a lot faster than they did the last time. In fact, J.W. got a beautiful turn out of that one. He lost a little space, however. They got pretty close together there. What you're seeing is a little desperation there. Steve was being pretty friendly there when he thought he had a lot of boat could just go around him. But now you see him cinch down and make him turn a tighter corner. So Steve David realizes how much is at stake here, and he cannot let J.W. beat him here. End of lap number two, Steve David's still out in front as they go through that lower corner. Pat was the speed that yeah, time. He's picking it up, 143 miles an hour that time. Right? He's said, J.W.'s after me. I better get on that throttle. Yeah, J.W.'s still after him because he isn't going to let go right now. That Haas Mortgage Investor boat is in this thing for sure. J.W.'s going to keep the hammer down into this corner for sure. He thinks maybe he can uh, take the measure of that Oberto boat from the inside here. What a good tight corner by J.W. Meyer. Let's hope he can hold that skid fin in and doesn't jump sideways because he'd be right in the rooster tail. Oh, good corner also by Steve and David. Nice and tight. I don't think there was any encroachment, but the boats did get pretty close. Here comes Steve David flying that boat across the start finish line for the checkered flag in the old boy Alberto. Right behind him, J.W. Myers in the Haas Mortgage Investors. What, uh, what yeah, happened? That? 43 miles an hour on that last lap. What happened in that last corner is they came off the exit pin, the last buoy of the corner. Steve gave him what they call a hip check. You know, he looked like he was going wide, but then he came in real quick, and you'll see that the J.W. Myers had to turn left quickly to, to hold his lane. So Steve David really worked hard because there was a lot at stake. Yeah, he, he pretty much had to put him into the boards there just he to did. be sure he could sew, sew this one up. He did. And uh, that's exactly who did a legal move. He was. A legal move. Good boat race. But not a but not a Steve David typical move. When you see Steve be that aggressive, you know he knows there's a lot at stake. Uh, Steve is usually the most gentlemanly driver out there, but right there he had his hands full, and he yep. needed to make sure that J.W. Myers didn't get that victory. The order of finish was the Alberto, followed by the Haas Mortgage. Number three was Graham Trucking, and fourth place went to uh, Albert Lee Appliance. Number 48, U48 with Brian Perkins. So now, of course, it comes down to numbers to see who has the best overall score through three standards and uh, makes a determination as to what lane they're going to start in between the Elam, of course, and the Alberto, and that is a little drama yet to come to make those sorts of choices. A little bit of a disappointment. Jeff Bernard was in it for about a lap and a half, but he kind of gave, uh, gave the rest of them uh, plenty of room after that and satisfied himself with third place. I think we're going to get a chance to look at that hip check we talked about it as a come off the corner. What they do is they come off the corner here. Normally, Steve David would just give him a ton of room there, but Steve David came off and then kind of went like this, and poor J.W. really had to veer. And when you have to veer, it really kills the uh, the speed because you want to keep the boat momentum. Right, here so here they come around here. He's giving them plenty of room, plenty of room. 
Now watch, we'll see an aerial shot here, I think. He's now looking him kind of cinch it up, and JW has to really grab a lot of left. You see that big swerve he did right there? Yeah, he had 35, 40 feet of space between the buoy and the Oberto, so he gave him plenty He gave no, him plenty of room. Here's a room. Now watch the aerial view. Watch the arc that Steve David has, and watch it change here at the end, and watch what it does.